Hi, it's Tony Brisky from Real Ghost Stories Online. Every single day, Jenny and myself do our best to try and create the best possible show for you. But it's not free to do that. We have a lot of hard costs on this end to distribute the show, produce the show, and put it out there for you. So we ask for your help by becoming an EPP, an extra podcast person. We're doing our best to make it worth your while by giving you a bonus episode every single week with some of the best stories we can find. Also, exclusive video content, including our new monthly video feature, Seeing Ghosts, where we examine some of the best ghost photos and discuss them that we get into the show here at Real Ghost Stories Online. All I ask is that if you listen to the show on a regular basis, please consider helping support keeping it on the air. It's only $5 a month or sign up for a full year at a time and get one month free. If you already are an APP, thank you very much. If you're not yet, please consider supporting a show that you enjoy so we can continue creating it for you. Sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com. Click become an EPP and thank you. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You're about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And on today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online... When trying to conjure a demon, a girl finds that something else materializes. An old owner still checks in on his beloved home after he dies. There is too much of a coincidence for a man who received a text from his daughter's old phone number. And a man searches his home for an intruder that he can hear but cannot see. Those stories and more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again. Hi. And how are you this fine day? I'm good. How are you? I'm enjoying the nice weather that we're having for uh, the middle of December. Shorts weather. Yeah. For uh, Kansas, it ain't half bad. <laughs> no. Walking down to the mailbox before, I felt like I should have had shorts on. Because mm-hmm. what is it? Like 70 or something? It's I don't know. 70. It's a record setting day here. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Although winter will be done in like a month and a half. So. Yeah. <laughs> it will. It's it's Winter's getting shorter and shorter here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for summer, even though we haven't hit uh, Christmas quite yet. <laughs> but uh, that's how I am. I'm always like, I, I like mentally, it's weird. I, I get in like these mindsets where I'm like always not quite where the real season is. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, oh, today would be a great day for, you know, insert seasonal activity here that the season you're not in is. Yeah. And then when the season actually for that comes around, I'm always still like, I'm ahead. I'm <laughs> off wishing it was another season. I'm never quite content with the current season that we're in. And I'm always like wishing I was in another season. I don't know why. It's just how I've always been. We need to fix that. Yeah. It's just kind of odd. It is. I've always felt like that. It's like, oh, it just, it's me. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Of course, you can also write it on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. So lots of ways to get your stories to us here at the show and of course we are uh, looking for more of your ghost photos for our next episode of seeing ghosts so if you have a uh, ghost photo that you would like to send to us to have featured on that video episode uh email tony t-o-n-y at real ghost stories online.com that new episode can be coming out very soon we've already lined up quite a few pretty damn good ghost photos if i uh, if i do say so it's uh, getting better every day so i'm excited about this next episode that'll be coming out in uh, in just a few weeks I'm going to kick off the show today. Our first letter on today's episode comes into us from Hazel. And Hazel writes in, hi there, Tony and Jenny. Hazel from Ireland here again. I'd like to tell you guys about the time my friend and I possibly conjured a demon that later appeared to me in a reoccurring dream. I was young and fascinated by Wicca and spellcraft. And one day, along with a friend of mine, we decided to try and conjure a demon. Looking back on it now, it seems entirely deranged, but hindsight is 2020. Also, at that time, I read a lot of books which romanticized the ideas of demons, ghosts, and all things otherworldly. So the concept did not seem as dangerous as it does to me now. We were in her garden, running in circles, saying the words, demons come over and over again. Deranged, I know. Less than a minute after we started, I saw a beautiful little girl standing in the next door neighbor's garden just watching us with the saddest look. She had long blonde pigtails, denim 
dungarees and was holding a brown teddy bear. I'd stopped running when I spotted her and my friend, not noticing, ran right into me, jolting me out of my thoughts and I began running again. The idea that she wasn't anything but a little girl, the little girl that she appeared to be, didn't occur to me until I asked my friend who she was later that night. She's very confused explaining that no little girl of that description lived on her road. Never mind next door. And to top it all off, her neighbors are not home. I've not been home all day. Fast forward a couple of years to when I've been experiencing a very scary reoccurring dream. I'd be in my room, but it was distorted as if it was existing within a carnival mirror. Things should be flying around my room, and I remember being so afraid. After having this dream many times, it occurred to me that perhaps this ghost just needed help passing on, so I spoke to it aloud and asked if it needed help. Lo and behold, the same little girl materialized, and I eventually helped her pass on. And after that, I never had the dream again. This confuses me a little, as the event which I first saw the little girl would make you think it was a demon in the guise of something innocent. But the fact that it never bothered me again after I helped it move in my dream makes me wonder otherwise. Any insight you guys would have would be welcome. Also, I finally have gotten my student grant and will become an EPP really soon. I'm super, super excited to have more awesome shows to binge on, which I really need as I listen to at least seven hours of the show each day and I'm almost up to date. Love your show and you guys too. Stay creepy, light, and good vibes from Hazel in Ireland. So in Ireland, do they have a student grant to become an EPP? Is that like something they could? <laughs> no, I think it just um, freed up <laughs> some of her school income. Okay. Yeah. You can't go to like the university and be like, yes, I'd like to get a grant to become an EPP to this really kick-ass ghost show. No. I didn't know if that was something they did in Ireland. No. <laughs> it didn't. This new program, only there. So what do you think? Um, I think actually with them running around trying to conjure something up, it mm -hmm. may have shown the spirit of the little girl that they were open mm -hmm. to other things. And maybe that's why she then showed herself. Mm -hmm. Do you get demon out of the little girl? No, because not really anything demonic ever happened. I mean, she kind of had some nightmares, which may have been the little girl trying to get her to take notice and mm -hmm. and do something. Um but nothing else happened and then the little girl went away so I really I don't think so I wonder if if the girl is from like another time and in, in place mm -hmm. you know that maybe she did live there maybe in one of the houses that that were, that are there now or were there at one point in time and are no longer standing could be no be interesting did, she didn't really get into much description on the attire well she did get into the attire yeah so what what are dungarees? Are they overalls? Is that what that is? I'm not sure. I know I've heard the term before. Okay. Maybe I'm thinking of Dunkaroos, the really bad children's snack from 1995, which was a little cup of animal cracker-like things that you dip into like a pudding mixture. It always goes back to food with you. Remember Dunkaroos? No. They were, it was one of those things where if you were over the age of eight and had a thing of Dunkaroos with you, you kind of like, really? That's really kind of a <laughs> little, little kid snack. Yeah. That's what I think of when I hear dungarees. I believe it might be overalls. I think so. so. I don't know. Maybe 1800s? Could even be. Oh, I don't could know. Could even be further than that. Couldn't I, I wore pigtails and overalls almost every day in my childhood. Sure. I'm just wondering how, how far back the little girl goes. Yeah. I don't know. Very interesting story. Thank you for, for sharing that with us. Speaking of going back in time, there's a book out right now. Okay. An audiobook that I am thoroughly beginning to enjoy. And. It's not necessarily ghost related, but I think our audience would enjoy it mm -hmm. because we talk about this on the show every now and then. And it's about it, it, it's it's about the making of of how they made Back to the Future. Okay. If you like the behind the scenes stuff, it talks about how they made all of uh, the the series from the Eric Stoltz character, who actually did you know this? Someone played the Marty McFly character before Michael J. Fox, and they filmed about. 15 25 percent of the movie mm -hmm. and they went this is not working yeah and then michael j fox was hired and the other guy went out it tells the story of that it tells the story of uh the whole movie from uh interviews exclusively with a bunch of the actors really interesting uh interesting book and uh we've arranged for you guys to get the audiobook uh for free uh when you uh, go to our website 
uh, and you click on the uh, Audible link for your free audio book. Go there, get uh, signed up, and you will get that book for absolutely free. Just search for it. It's called We D Don't Need Roads, The Making of Back to the Future Trilogy. I love the behind-the-scenes stuff. Sure. I, I mean, I, I enjoy biographies. And, and this is just kind of the biography of something that, you know, we grew up with. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have one about Ghostbusters at some point. But, that would be great. But if you want that book, uh, it's a really interesting audio book. Uh, it's, it's yours free when you uh, go to our website and click on the uh, Audible free, uh, uh, free audio book link there. Uh, just go through that and then uh, search uh, We Don't Need Roads, uh, the making of Back to the Future trilogy, and uh, you can select that as your free audio book. It's good. There it, you go. It's nifty, yeah. if you will. Jeffrey writes in, Hi there, my name is Jeff from Tampa, Florida, and I stumbled across your show a few weeks back, and I love it. I quickly became an EPP member. Funny enough, found out today that my manager listens to the show as well. That's fun. That is fun. And they really help, uh, that helps the workday fly by. I have many stories to tell. Some things that have happened when I was a child. Also a story of when I was lucky enough to have a friend work at the Bellevue Biltmore and able to uh, provide a personal ghost tour of the hotel that people are not able to usually go on. The hotel has been on many ghost hunting shows, but I'll leave those for another day. The first, the first story I want to tell happened about 10 or so years ago at an abandoned asylum in uh, Tapron Springs, Florida. And being in my late teens, early 20s, I thought I was invincible. So one evening, two friends and I decided it was a good idea to go, go to this asylum and have a little look around. The way to the asylum, I kept getting an uneasy feeling and feeling very anxious, but fought that feeling. And when we finally arrived, decided to man up and follow my friends inside. I forgot to mention when we pulled up, we saw that the building was already in the process of being demolished. So that should have been our first sign not to go in. As we jumped the fence and entered a part of the building, my anxiety got worse. And then without realizing it, I was separated from my friend and that's when things started getting bad. I started hearing heavy booted footsteps and sounds of something scratching at the walls. It always sounded like it came from around the corner or behind me. When thinking this may have been one of my friends, I'd go towards the sound to find no one was there. I was chasing these sounds for what felt like hours, but was probably only a few minutes until I turned one corner and saw a huge black mass and it felt very menacing at the end started to walk towards me, I basically said nope and ran out of the building and back towards my friend's car. I arrived at the car out of breath and to my dismay, my friends haven't got back to the car yet, so I was stuck inside. I needed to talk to someone, so I pulled out my phone and tried to make a call to only realize my phone was out of battery and I knew at least 80 to 90% when we started driving here because I pulled it off the charger. Also, while waiting outside the car, I kept hearing something tapping at the back window, which freaked me out even more. When my friends finally arrived, they asked what happened to me, and I said I didn't want to talk about it, and we left it at that. I asked them later if anything happened to them, and they said not really. The second story I want to tell is more of what happened to my roommate. I always knew something follows me, either just a curious spirit or a guardian of sorts. When I lived alone at my townhouse, I'd see things out of the corner of my eye or things fall when they shouldn't have. I never felt anything bad or mean-spirited in my house. More of a, hey, just letting you know I'm here. One day my friend broke up with his girl and needed a place to stay for a while. And I had an extra room, so I let him move in. For the first few weeks, everything was normal. Then he started hearing sounds. Almost every day I'd get stories of what happened to him that day. He'd constantly hear his name being called when I wasn't home or downstairs. It started getting bad when he said he'd see a shadow person standing at the top of the stairs and staring at him. He'd call me and ask if I was home, and I'd tell him I wasn't, and he'd tell me what he saw. One evening, we were hanging out in the kitchen area, and I bent over to pick up something from the floor, and when I stood up, he was bone white with a look of horror on his face. Asking what the hell was going on, he said, when I bent down, he saw a white figure behind me, about four or five feet tall, pudgy, with a stick-like object in its hair, and said that it had a menacing look on its face. We tried to look online to see if we could find out what the creature might have been, but couldn't find anything. He said he saw it a few times, either standing outside my room or when he would open his door in the middle of the night. and see it standing in the middle of the hallway, almost like it was waiting. He decided he'd be moving out and started looking for a new place, and... 
One of the few nights before he left, he said he walked out of his room to go to the bathroom and said he saw a black orb floating over my door and that it had what looked like a cape flapping in the wind behind it. We nicknamed it the Batman Ghost. While this was all going on, I never felt anything evil or bad in the house. I've always been very open to feeling spirits, and I know something has always been around me. So I'm not sure if whatever this is followed him or just didn't like him in my house. He said when he moved out, he never had anything happen at his new place. Sorry for writing a long story, and I appreciate all you do. I'll write more about the other things that have happened in the near future. I wonder, honestly, if maybe it followed him home mm -hmm. from ghost hunting, and that's why it seemed to lurk around his door and be around him, and and it doesn't affect the former roommate at all anymore. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be stuck on him. Mm -hmm. you got a ghost following you. That's what I think, and maybe it came home when he saw that black mass. What was it, in the asylum? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it neutral? Menacing was the term used to describe it twice. Sure. So, I don't get... I don't get where the menacing comes from. Yeah. Because I didn't hear a whole lot of menacing activity in there. Yeah. I mean, at least in the... I suppose anything, you know, spooky or ghost-like that's following you is going to feel a bit off. Mm -hmm. But compared to some of the menacing stories we've had where things were really menacing. It doesn't sound like it gave off any good vibes. Sure. So I would go with that. It's just something that's not right. Mm -hmm. Good story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Always not a good idea to explore abandoned asylums. Yeah. That's the lesson of the day. Laura writes in, Hello, I recently came across your radio show and love it so far since I love ghost stories. I'm currently located in northern Colorado. My story goes like this. And two years ago, I bought this nice little house that me and my mom share. The house is 30 years old and the lady whom I bought it from decided to sell the house and move into a home instead. I never met her husband, but my realtor explained that she was a widow, but we don't know where or how her husband died. Anyway, the house is very cozy, and I love it. There's been a couple of occurrences at my house. One is that we always leave a nightlight on in the kitchen, and we turn it off in the morning since one time I was alone at the house. And as usual, I turned on the lights and went to bed. I always shut my door room at night, and before going to sleep, I could see the light from under my door. The funny thing is, is that the light was off the next morning, and I was thinking that the light bulb broke. I went ahead and turned it on, and it worked just fine. It's never happened since. I don't know, but that was something interesting. The most unusual thing that has happened is that one time I was mowing the lawn in my backyard and I had my headphones on listening to music. I wasn't thinking or feeling anything unusual since it was a hot day and it was about 4 p.m. Anyway, we have a small part of the yard fenced for my dog. Specifically, I was mowing around that fence and I leaned over to the lawnmower to get the bag off or to check on something and I suddenly glanced up trying to look at my dog and to my incredible surprise, I saw a tall, old man standing close to my dog, looking at my direction. I only glanced at him when I tried to fix my eyes in that direction, and there was nothing there anymore. The man appeared solid. I see that he was tall and that he had brown slacks on, what appeared to be a plaid shirt. I didn't feel scared at all, but something gave me the feeling that it was probably the old owner checking on the house and probably supervising the yard. I haven't had any other experiences since then. And I'm not scared of the house since it has a nice vibe to it. Thank you for your time and hopefully you guys can find this interesting. It makes you wonder if he was showing up to the previous owner and it just, it was too much for her to see her husband like checking on the garden and stuff. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be a bit much. Yeah. Seeing your, uh, your significant other still tending to the regular things mm -hmm. around the house, around the yard, because there's a certain, you know, obviously point of that where, you know, you're, you're trying to cope and deal with that loss. And it probably doesn't help when they keep popping up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as much as you're like, Oh, it'd be great. I'll get to see him again when I'm dead. Uh, but I still have to live for a little while. And I'd like to not be driven insane while I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. So you're saying you would not like me to still be working in the garden. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it was probably <laughs> too much, you know, and then you start to question, am I hallucinating? Does anybody else see this person? Sure. 
and you can't really go say, hey, I still see Grandpa all the time. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else see Grandpa? No. Nope. Nope. Just you. You're a little bit odd. Hey, there's these nice people here that I'd like to take you to this uh, nice little place. <laughs> have a little chat. They have this jacket for you to put on. <laughs> Isn't it? It looks warm and cozy, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Kara writes in, Hi, my name's Kara. I'm uh, from Alberta, Canada. This experience happened quite a few years ago. My sister had this phone and uh, she didn't uh, uh, use it very often until she got a new one a while after, along with a new number, because the plan she had didn't seem to work properly. After she got her new phone, her old phone remained in a drawer in the kitchen and wasn't turned off for the rest of it being there. One day, my family went out for the day, but my father took a different car because he had an errand to run. When we got back, he told us that he had gotten a text from my sister's old number saying, Dad, look at the truck. I'm waving at you. Because she had a new number and the old phone hadn't been turned on for a long time, we knew that it couldn't have been my sister that sent the text. It also seemed impossible because at the time, only my dad had a truck and my sister was riding with my mom on this day. Couldn't it be a coincidence due to the fact that it was my sister's old number. This person managed to text my dad's number, which would be basically impossible even if her old number was being used by someone else. Should we go through that one again? That's well, a fun web of... <laughs> do you get it? I, I think so. Okay, so basically her old number she doesn't use anymore. Texted the dad. Mm-hmm. Saying, hey, I'm in this truck next to you. And if the number had been reassigned to somebody, sure. they obviously wouldn't have had her dad's number in their phone. Okay. I get it. Yeah. That's a very easy, much easier way to explain all that. <laughs> uh, my dad jumped to the conclusion that it was paranormal because of his own past experiences, as he has the ability to see such things. My other sister also has a gift, but uses it much more than my dad because he doesn't enjoy seeing these things. Needless to say, the phone no longer resides in the drawer in the kitchen. I haven't had any, I haven't had many experiences in my life, and to be honest, I hope it stays like that. I love the podcast and find myself very scared at night because of it. It's my policy to only listen if I'm in a public place during the daytime. Thank you for reading, and I hope to hear it on the podcast. I don't know. If he's already having other paranormal things happen, it's probably somehow related to that because mm -hmm. I mean that would be like somebody who's got my old phone number texting you mm -hmm. saying hey honey I'm right here and there's no way that would happen mm -mm. very very bizarre mm -hmm. it's almost like telepathic texting yeah of like she's thinking that when she's and it's somehow not just going to him telepathically mm-hmm or, or by a wave, it's it's actually entering the text universe and getting to him that way. Very bizarre. Makes you wonder if anybody else saw the text. Not saying that it didn't happen, but mm -hmm. just was it really a text or was it one of those ghostly things that suddenly vanishes? Like when you take a picture of a ghost and you go to show somebody and it's no longer on your phone. Mm -hmm. Where you think you see it? Mm -hmm. what, but I, I don't have any doubts that he got that text. I sure. Just, wonder if he was able to show it to anyone else it's an interesting thought i mean we do have those stories where things are just like that you know where i got this photo, looked at it and i was about to show my friends and then it was not on my phone anymore right and i could see up oh, and the text is completely gone you almost wonder if there was some reason why that text showed up to like that they're unaware of yeah like, like we were talking the other day about timing mm -hmm. and did the fact that he took Two seconds to read that text, help him avoid something else that could have been tragic. Yeah. I always wonder about that and the timing of things. You know, when, when little things like that pop up that are unexplainable. Like, essentially the world's last resort of stopping you from doing something because it's not your time yet. Mm -hmm. It resorts to paranormal interference. Yeah, I could see that. And I also thought of, too, it sounded like this phone had been in the drawer for quite some time. Because mm -hmm. I know there's been times where you've sent me a text and I didn't get it for a couple days. Sure. But I don't think it would take that long. That'd be a lot of bouncing around out of nowhere. It would. Yeah, I would think that there's there's something paranormal going on there. Thank you for that story. Daisy writes in, Hi, my name's Daisy. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I wanted to call and tell you guys my story, but unfortunately, it would cost too much to make an international call. My mother and I have been moving from house to house for the past 10 years, but one house that really stood out to me was one that we moved to at the start of 2013. 
It was initially giving off positive vibes to me, and it seemed like a pleasant house to reside in, but it slowly showed itself to be questionable. It was about six months into our lease when my mom and I were both at home. It was around 9.30 to 10 p.m. We are both sitting together and watching TV. And just to clarify, the kitchen faces the side of the TV and couch. So we're sitting together, and then at some point I got up and went into my room, which was past the kitchen and down the hall, 10 or so minutes past, and I'm still sitting in my room, and I decided to go back out into the kitchen, which meant I was walking back into the same room as to where my mom was. So I walk back into the kitchen, and mom quickly turns her head towards me and looks at me in shock. And I ask what was wrong, and she said that she thought I was standing in the kitchen the whole time because she could see me at the corner of her eye. I explained that I wasn't. I was in my room. She tells me that she could see a female wearing all black, just like I was, standing in the kitchen. We're both scared, but as much as I know mom can sense the paranormal like I can, she tries to ignore it and tries to convince me that she didn't see anything after we both realized it wasn't a living being. It was not long after when my friend had stayed over one night and she was lying in my queen-size bed with the lights off and I was doing something in the kitchen. When I hear my friend quietly yell out, Daisy, Daisy, come here, please. I could tell by the tone of her voice that it wasn't good. So I quickly ran in to see if she was okay and I ran in her face and I ran in and see her face turned white as she realized that the person she thought was lying next to her in bed wasn't me. She also believed that it was a female. One more encounter that I think involved the same mysterious female ghost was around the same time my friend had stayed over, but my boyfriend was over as he was quite frequently. We were in bed and he was lying on top of me. He had lifted his upper body up so I was looking at him as I was lying down. I suddenly see this dark gray female face pop into my line of vision directly behind his left shoulder. I quickly crossed my, closed my eyes and didn't tell my boyfriend and opened them again and the face was gone. I sometimes think that this ghost came into my house after my brother had left a very old car in my driveway, which was right next to my room, only because every time I went near the car, I felt sick or just off in general. As I say, it sent me bad vibes. I wonder if whether this ghost was in the house when we moved in or it came in from this very old car. I have other stories about a few other houses that can be for another time. Thank you so much. I'm a long-time listener now. I always have you guys playing in my car and tell all my friends about how much I enjoy your podcast. You guys are amazing. That's weird to get that kind of a vibe from a car and then you have activity like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I somehow think they're connected. I would think the car is connected. I think she did a good job of connecting those dots as far as, okay, what is the thing that changed in my world right when this stuff started happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always a good thing to kind of be observant of, especially like right when it's beginning to happen, mm -hmm. rather than, well, it's been going on for a while. I can't quite pinpoint exactly when things started, because if you can kind of start pinpointing that stuff, especially if it's something that's not common in your life, um, then you can start ruling things out, mm -hmm. objects and people, this or that. Um, and then sometimes making adjustments to those things can also then ward out and rid yourself of whatever the hell it is that's, uh, that's come in. I'm wondering what happened. Did the car stay there? Did things calm down if the car went away? What, you know, what happened next? I don't know. I was also kind of curious because it seemed like this ghost particularly had some kind of connection to the bed. Mm -hmm. Was it a bunk bed you happened to be sleeping? <laughs> no, I, I, I think she would have said it was a bunk bed. Yeah. But it just seemed like twice bed-related mm -hmm. issues happened. Something very... Something was wanting to connect with her some way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Justin writes into us, Hello, my name is Justin, and I've been a listener now for just over a year. And have always been a little hesitant to write in. My curiosity and frustration of not knowing finally got the better of me, and I'd like some input from you and the community, if possible. I've had several experiences over the years, ever since I was about six years old. It started with my father recently telling me that he would wake up in the middle of the night and hear me talking to someone, sometimes for several, several hours when I was apparently asleep. That went on for several years before my first actual experience occurred. I got in one of those electric race car tracks, the type that has a trigger attached to the set and you squeeze it to make the cars go around. 
The particular set I had was a construction vehicle instead of cars. Among them was my favorite, a little 18-wheeler that had a detachable trailer. As with most children, I was very attached to my favorite toy and would oftentimes take the truck and trailer and put them on my bookcase against the wall where it attached before I go to bed for the night. At this point, I feel as though I should tell you that the shelves in the bookcase were about one and a half feet wide and my room was 15 to 20 feet long. As I was lying down, drifting off to sleep, the truck and trailer flew off the bookcase and hit the wall on the opposite side of the room. I laid there for a little while, frozen in fear, before I finally worked up the courage to get out of bed and run downstairs. Flash forward to late November 2014, the part I'd like to everyone's thoughts on. It was raining heavily on one particular night and I had gone to bed early as I had to be awake early in the morning for work. Sometime around 1 a.m. I'd woken up for no imme uh, immediately apparent reason. I was lying on my side facing the opposite side of the bed exactly as I had been when I had fallen asleep. When I opened my eyes, I saw something lying next to me that couldn't be explained and it stuck in my thoughts ever since. It was what looked like a waterlogged corpse. I did not feel threatened by it being there. Its eyes looked almost sour, sourful. Sour, sour. Sorrowful. I, sorrow. My tongue was stuck for a moment. Sour. Sourful. <laughs> I can't say the word. Sour. Sour. Yeah. Sour. <laughs> sorrow. Sorrow. Sorrowful. You ever get that? Yeah. It's not just me. I'm not. No. You're good. not just saying it to make me feel good. Uh, what word is it I can't say ever? I can't remember. There's one I can't say. I've tripped up on it on the show several times. You have it in your mind. You can hear it in your mind, but your mouth will not cooperate mm -hmm. at the same time. My first thought was maybe it was sleep paralysis, so I blinked my eyes and wiggled my fingers and toes to confirm that it in indeed was not. I can continue to look at uh, whatever this was for almost a minute before it eventually faded into the darkness in my room and vanished. I have a couple of other stories about what I believe is the same thing I saw in my bed that night, but we'll save them for another time. Sorry for the rambling. I've been holding these experiences in for so long that it feels good to get them out. Keep up the great work you both do in maintaining a safe space for all to tell about their encounters. Until next time, Justin from Alabama. Justin's a lot braver than me. If I saw a waterlogged <laughs> corpse in my bed... I'd be so upset. Oh, what's wrong with a little waterlogged corpse? I just think of the, remember the walker from the well? Yes. Walking Dead, that mm -hmm. one's the grossest of all. They tend to puff up too. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of pus involved with a waterlogged corpse. Yeah. That's why I would be so afraid. It's a new children's story. It's the hottest one for Christmas. My little waterlogged corpse. That's so gross. My little waterlogged corpse. By Mattel. <laughs> All the children want it. No, you know it, it's it's surprising. You know they there is that uh, that line of dolls for child for girls. The what is it? The they're like zombies. Oh, the monster monster high. high. They're yeah. like dead Barbies. They're dead Barbies. Yeah, who would have ever thought that that would ever be a thing? I don't know. They're creepy. And they've been around for a while now too. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those things where it was like, oh, it's a little phase. It's based on a movie or something, and they're gone within mm -hmm. you know a, a season if you will. They've they've been around for a while. Right. You know what they also have? And I, I know this is much probably more for collectors, but if I was a kid, I would probably definitely want all of them because they actually have play sets. Okay. Uh, Walking Dead. Sure. Has little characters, like little G.I. Joe type walking. There's like all of them. Yeah. You can get all the characters and then they have little like, um, and it's very detailed sets like prison and all the different <laughs> things. And like I said, I think a lot of them are more so for your, you know, comic con type collector folks who like to display them on a shelf or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, and, um, but has, if I was a kid, I'd be all about that and I'd be playing with them, you know, yeah. collectors would be like, no, that's a really rare one. And I, you know, well, I found one time when I was playing Legos with Harper, I found myself taking all the little Lego people parts mm -hmm. and trying to make as close as I could to the <laughs> cast of Walking Dead out of the little Lego miniature people. How close did you come? I had a good, I had a good Daryl uh -huh. going on yeah. and a brick because I had the the, the, cow, the cowboy hat and I had a crossbow for Daryl. Yeah. So I was doing pretty good, and I, the rest were screwed. So. Did that? Did you say the rest got eaten by zombies yeah. and have an arm missing or something? Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, 
it's uh, it's interesting stuff what they have out there now. James writes in, uh, in my teenage years, we lived in a house that had a driveway that started on a short street but ended at a highway. The house sat on the center of an acre. One side had the driveway running past, surrounded on the other three sides by a thin pine tree and an overgrown field filled in the area past them. The convenience store sat on the highway end of the driveway, so people using our driveway as a shortcut was common. One night I was awake watching Conan. Stephen King uh, was uh, the guest and promoting Storm of the Century. So whatever day that was. The car races through the driveway and the cops on shortly following. Not the first time this happened, but a few minutes later the cops came around the end of the barn in the next lot. Spotlights on, scanning the yard. I'm looking out the living room window, watching the car as I hear the frozen door, uh, the, the front door open. I froze, then shook my head and remembered the two cats we owned at the time. One was currently asleep beside me, so I get up, go to the kitchen. Second cat is sleeping on the table. I zipped to the door leading to the porch, locked it, turned the light on, and nothing. I stood, or I shook it all off, both doors now locked, went back to the couch. A minute or two passed, and I hear the hallway door across in the first door I locked open, and a second later, footsteps run down the hall. I know nobody had come out of the hall as I could see the end from my seat. I checked on the sleeping kitchen cat, and he's still on the table. I remember thinking, what if they're already in the house? I'm grabbing a knife, going from room to room, checking closets and behind doors, but found nothing. My mom called down to me at the time, and I said I was just looking for something. I checked everywhere and knew that nobody was there with me. Finishing in the dining room where the hallway ended, I went back to my couch, lights on, knife under pillow, all calm. As I lie down, shut off the TV and rolled over, I hear from the window in the dining room the sound of hands rubbing and squeaking down the wet windows. Nobody's there. I can see it lit up from the outside. That was the, scary ex the scariest experience in that house. Okay, so... Do you think the cop cars had anything to do with the phantom running through the house? It really makes you wonder. Was there a connection there? Was that just some sort of weird coincidence that these two events occurred at the same time? Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder. I mean, if, if there was something connected to somebody in yeah. one of those vehicles and it was kind of a passing through type deal, mm -hmm. but a lot of energy. I mean, obviously... On probably on both ends of things, um, you know, cops being a little more used to having to be in those situations, um, but still certainly, you know, adrenaline up. Yeah. Um, maybe not quite as high as the person trying to evade them, but I would think that the, you know, maybe there's something with the evader. Maybe there was a reason that person was trying to evade the cops mm -hmm. and maybe there was something trying to make itself known uh, with that person. I don't know. That was nearby. It's just, it's strange. Very scary. Mm hmm And it's, the odd part is, all these things are going on and the cats aren't doing anything. Yeah. Cats are usually, yeah, cats can be pretty darn lazy, but when there's something going on, the cats are usually the first to let you know. Yeah. They're kind of like the parakeets in the coal mine. <laughs> canary. Or canary, whatever. Yeah. They're like the robins. Mm hmm Or the, <laughs> just insert random bird here. Um that's just weird. I mean, that that they were not, especially with paranormal too, that they weren't sensing any of these things that were going on. Very, very bizarre. There was something, another point I wanted to make there, and I, it slipped my mind what I wanted to say, but okay, it was a good story. Yeah. Sandra writes in, my best friend and I would always share stories about our experiences with spirits. I recently started listening and I heard a caller talking about a voice that sounded like her dad talking to her. A similar story that involves me, my best friend, and her children, who are also my godchildren. When I was young, around 12 or 13, I used to think I heard my mother calling me. One time, it was so clear that I yelled back, yes, and she didn't respond. Go downstairs to look for her and ask her what she needed. She said that she didn't call me. I knew I heard her calling. My mom, who knows stuff about spirits, told me that if I ever heard a voice calling my name, not to respond. From then on, she would come to the bottom of the stairs and call my name loudly or come to my door. I go to the top of the stairs to make sure she was there before answering. When I was in college and definitely home alone, I again heard that voice and it sounded like my mom calling my name. The voice sounded far off. 
I stayed in my room and turned the TV up loud. I told my mom when she came home and just asked if I answered, and I said no. We just went on about our business. Fast forward about 14 years. To save money on rent, I ended up moving in with my best friend and her family for about eight months. I knew she had experienced various ghostly events throughout her life. I also knew there were weird things that happened in their current house. Her kids, three boys, would tell us that they saw shadows and heard knocks coming from the attic. One day I came home and saw my friend talking to her niece and another friend. It looked like an intense conversation. When I walked in, they all stared at me. What? What is it? I said. My friend called the boys and told them to tell me what happened. The middle child, who was about nine, the oldest was eleven and the youngest was seven. He told me that while his mother and I were at work and his grandmother was napping, he heard a voice calling his name. All three boys heard it. I asked them if it was their grandmother and they said no, it wasn't her voice. I asked them whose voice it did sound like and all three said yours. I looked at my friend and they just stared at me. I told the boys that if they ever hear a voice calling to them not to answer. When my friend was a young girl, she also had an experience where she heard a female voice calling her name. In her situation, her father was with her and he heard it too. Everyone was asleep because the two of them had been turning out the lights before her father put her to bed. It seems like the ghost voice will take on the voice of someone the child trusts deeply, yet somehow there's something that still makes us doubt who it is that's calling. Trust your gut. I think that might be a good rule of thumb to not answer if you're not sure who's calling your name. Just to make sure. Yeah, because then you give it that acknowledgement that it's looking for. And that could be opening a whole slew of issues. Our children would use that against us. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't could... respond because I didn't want to talk to the demon. Yeah, I, <laughs> I could see that being the case. Like, damn it, we should have never set that rule up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know... I, I can see why they set it up because they had a pattern of something going on in their house mm -hmm. and they, they wanted to establish some boundaries there with it. So until you have demons calling names and you can, or ghosts calling names in your house and, and you're getting confused there, probably not a good idea to, to, to implement that rule. But if that does happen, that's a good rule to have. Sure. I was just thinking for our listeners that are dealing with sure. an ongoing yeah. haunting, that might be something to think about. Just, I mean, it, it takes a little extra effort, but we could all use a little more exercise. You know, you, you just say, hey, you know, if I'm calling your name. I'm going to be in this place, centralized location. You can see me or I'm going to be here and doing it. Uh -huh. And that's it. So I'm not going to call you from the bathroom. I'm not going to call you from that room. Not, if that's happening, it's the ghost. Don't respond. Except if you're calling from the bathroom and you really need somebody to bring you some toilet paper. That would be an interesting ghost story. That could be bad. The ghost that constantly asks for toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And then I got the double ply. I went all the way to the upstairs bathroom, opened the door, and no one was there. <laughs> <laughs> However, they did leave a surprise in the toilet. It appeared as though they had a lot of tacos. Oh, God. <laughs> you, you just take it too far. Do -do -do. Could happen. Could happen. Okay. You'd want to go get that tested then. No. And see, where did this come from? No. It's a ghost specimen. Mm. <laughs> I'm not even going to feed into this because you're just trying to bait me to say something stupid. No, I'm not. Yeah, you do that. I'm not trying to bait you into say something. It'd be like like the ectoplasm. It's ecto ectopupum. <laughs> so, our little one would really get a kick out of laughing her ass off right mm -hmm. now if she was hearing this. Mm -hmm. She'd just be ah! Because that is her favorite word. Yeah. 855 <laughs> is her number. John writes in, My family experienced a few strange things at our previous house in Pasadena, California. We moved into an older craftsman-style house in northwestern Pasadena in 2001. I'm not sure of the year built, but I speculate the 1940s. The house was renovated prior to us moving in, so we were pretty excited to move into our new home. After a few months living in the house, my older daughter, which was who was about five at the time, now 19, would complain to my wife and me that she couldn't sleep last night because the boy kept pinching her. Her being five, we figured she had a nightmare or something. This wouldn't happen every night, but she would complain about him pinching her or playing with her feet occasionally. 
One night really freaked her out, though. She woke up in the middle of the night feeling scared and wanted to come to her bedroom and sleep with us. She's done many times before. However, this one night, as she was on the way to our room, she'd seen a little elf-looking person standing by the entrance to her bedroom. She said he was messing with her by sticking his tongue out at her and kid things like that. She changed her mind and went back to her bed and fell asleep. The next night, my daughters went to bed, but my wife and I stayed up for a few hours more watching TV. I was sitting on the love seat while my wife was sitting on the sofa. There was a center rug and coffee table in the middle of the living room, and we were just watching TV and talking when all of a sudden I see a white mist or vapor start from the floor. My wife isn't noticing it. She's watching TV, but I see this start to form to about three and a half feet tall, then immediately zoomed towards my wife. At that very moment, my wife quivers, saying she got the chills all of a sudden. I'm sitting there like, what the hell? I didn't say anything yet is to what I just saw because I didn't want to freak her out. Time passes and we head to bed. We're lying down for about five minutes and we hear a mommy. We thought, oh great, Priscilla is going to come to our bed. So we stay there and wait and we hear mommy again. But this time we hear the pitter patter of feet crossing our dining room area on the tile through the living room towards our bedroom we wait and wait and she doesn't come into our room we get up to check on them and walk to their room and they're both sound asleep my five-year-old in her bed and her one-year-old sister in her crib that freaked us out a couple years passed and a few other minor things happened around the house at this time for instance the tv would change channels or turn off on its own i would just have to yell stop and it would stop the night before going to bed, I would do my normal walk through the house, ensuring all doors and windows are closed and locked, made sure all lights are off and so forth. Went to bed and woke up and noticed one of my flashlights was lying on the ground in the middle of our living room, turned on. I know for a fact I would have seen a flashlight turned on while doing my walk around the house. I asked my daughters if they'd left the flashlight on, but they said no. Little things like this would happen occasionally. We didn't really fear what was going on, but didn't like the fact that he was messing with our daughter. We believe it was the spirit of a young child. We moved about two years later. That's interesting that it formed to about three feet tall and mm -hmm. then went through the mom. Yeah. It makes you wonder if that was the voice that they heard that night. Sure. If it was from that that thing. And the child describing the thing as a elf or, yeah. a, or a gnome or what, what was it described? Is that an elf? Elf, yeah. Also thought a little boy. But, sure. you know, if you're half asleep you could mistake one for the other. Sure, and if you're a little kid and you know that, like, mythological, you know, creatures are, are typically these things and you know something shouldn't be there, you're probably going to go to the land of imaginary, not the land of paranormal. Mm -hmm. And go, oh, it's an elf or, you know, something of that nature. Sure. So, yeah, very, uh, very odd story. That'd be very creepy hearing the, the mommy. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, I, I don't like the idea of the children ghosts that are wandering around. I mean, not that they're doing anything evil or anything. It's just, it's sad and it's kind of scary and it's weird. Yeah. But maybe it was trying to look for a playmate there, too. Yeah. With the be. child. The next letter comes in. Good evening. Here's my experience. I went to my best, uh, I, I went uh, to my best from high school sister's house, best friends from high school sister's house. It's all relevant, I promise. The sister had two kids, a boy, eight, and a girl, 10. Megan, my best friend, has a daughter, two. And I had my daughter with me. It was one and a half. So it was a full house of people. Megan and I, now 28, are so excited to see each other after a few years and caught up like no time had passed except our daughters were getting tired so we put them to bed. I slept in the little boy's room with my daughter and Megan with her daughter in her niece's room. Everyone went to bed in the house, so I'm only 28 years old and I have gray hairs. I'm extremely sensitive about them because I thought I wouldn't have them for a little later in life. Around 7 a.m. I was asleep and all of a sudden I hear a little boy's voice amplified, loud and kind of high-pitched. Say, look, she has gray hairs. And he laughs a little. I sit up in shock because I thought Megan's nephew was playing around, but he's passed out downstairs on the pull-out sofa. So I tried to get it out of my head. So I mentioned it later in the day, telling her the story when I told you. And she said, oh, no. I thought she thought I was crazy or something. She said, no, she and her nephews play with that ghost and 
I've always had conversations with him all the time, but he's never talked to anyone else. This day, almost six months later, I can still hear the sound of his voice. The feelings he transferred to me was extremely cold, along with this playful jokester feel to him. I felt he was so lonely. Also, I needed advice on my next subject. My family is extremely sensitive with their sixth sense I've inherited, and I have it, but what my husband calls The Shining. I've been too afraid to watch the movie. It started off with me playing around in college with connecting people. I see images of people, childhood uh, homes and such detail. I can see images of past people along with pain in my body. I believe my dreams are messages sometimes from loved ones past. I look back through my life and I can tell it's always been there, but I thought it was luck that I could know who was calling me. And I've seen my husband's grandma die before it happened and felt my grandma touch my toe when she died. Honestly, it scares me a lot when I'm correct, but other than the hand, I want to know more about it. The curiosity is eating away at me. Two questions. Number one, what the heck is going on with me? And number two, how do I help people with this said gift? Thank you and stay bright. Okay, well, I think what's going on is maybe, you know, medium. Sure. Being a medium and not really knowing or honing in on that skill. Mm -hmm. And as far as how you help people with that, I think over time you just have to learn to trust your gut and what comes through. Uh -huh. And I think sometimes you'll get a message that you're supposed to tell somebody else but you'll probably talk yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. But I think once you start doing that, you're going to find that more often than not, it's going to make sense to the person you're talking to. Yeah. You want to trust your instincts on that. Mm -hmm. and, and after probably a couple times of doing it, um, it will make more sense and you'll build up the courage to do it as long as you don't get a lot of crazy looks right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, you'll get a crazy look immediately until you deliver the message and it clicks with the person. Mm -hmm. We had, um, stories like that quite a few right right at the beginning of the show and we started doing it we had uh, who who was it cisco somebody cisco did yeah where um they had a message they just walked up to somebody and just shared it mm -hmm. and they got a crazy look at first but then oh my god this makes total sense how do you know these things mm -hmm. and some people just have the ability so what's going on with you you have that ability you have that sensitivity and now it's up to you how you want to use it it's not, you're not crazy or anything. It's just, you happen to have that ability. Mm -hmm. It's like some people can do uh, running marathons very well or insert anything here, insert some sort of skill. Sure. That's just an innate ability. Some people can paint extremely well. Mm -hmm. Some people can play the piano extremely well without tons of training. This just comes to you that same way. Mm -hmm. So use it, uh, use it wisely. There you go. That wraps up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like our show, please help us keep it on the air. Become an EPP, an extra podcast person. Sign up on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click Become an EPP. Get all those bonus episodes. Uh, almost 70 of them now for you to uh, thoroughly enjoy. And, of course, all the bonus video material as well. So check that out, realghoststoriesonline.com. Click Become an EPP. That's what helps keep this thing going. Check it out, realghoststoriesonline.com. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.